Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another exciting episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Uh, today, we're going to be digging deep into an area a lot of people I don't think pay enough attention to. We're going to talk about identity and privacy, and then we're going to get into consent. We've got one of the, I think, one of the foremost gurus in this space with us today. Sal D'Agostino is with us from Open Consent. Uh, Sal, welcome. Thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to join us, man. Appreciate it. Aloha, Andrew. Always nice to be back on Security Matters. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, this, so I, I saw an article today that was in, I think, Security Watch magazine. Um, there's some folks in California in a district there that want to outlaw facial recognition technologies. I think until everybody gets a handle on how they're being used. Um, what do you think the overriding sort of problem that we're having with identity in our country is? Did we forget how powerful it was? Was is everybody too open with it? I mean, I don't know what to say other than people share anything, but then they don't want anything shared. It's kind of this dilemma I see. Yeah. So. Um... I, I do think the pendulum swinging a little bit. I also mm. think that the concept of privacy, uh, you know, is something that's evolving. Um, I don't mm. think it's very, very well developed, um, as would be evidenced by the fact that both sort of like the, well, the, both the International Standards Organization and our National Institute of Standards are both right now working on putting together privacy framework. It's not, mm. So it's not it's not as if there really was one that people <laughs> ha, ha, had before. Um, that notwithstanding, you know, there's been a lot of people who've done a lot of work around privacy for a long time, and uh, and and so coming on, and and I think that what we're what's happening right now is that. Um, you're beginning to see a change in what how, what privacy is. Okay. Um, for for if you look before um, at both security and privacy because they're very closely related, um, what what you would see and what most of the effort and regulation and other stuff was around um, was the concept of personally identifiable information and sensitive information and Protecting that, and okay. that was con that was considered the goal of, um, of privacy, and you know, and security was uh, an important component in, in accomplishing that in terms of being able to do things, you know, it, yeah, in a secure channel or, or you know encrypted or whatever the case may be related to security way. Um, what's changed is the fact that a lot of it, well. In some ways, due to GDPR, which is the General okay. Data Protection you know, <laughs> Regulation, which basically said that users have privacy rights. So, what has changed from protecting people's personal information and then trying to make them a whole in a breach in which they never had consented really to have their information used in ah. any way near the way it ended <laughs> up being anyway? Mm -hmm. um, um, and something which was very much trying to minimize the risk through an end user license uh, or or a I agree button, um, like the wrong kind of consent form. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the kind yeah, no it, one ever it, reads, right? Like that that big long, well, well, you know, five page, ten thousand word thing right. that no no one ever read. Well, Right. So, so on one hand, that's that's your introduction, and then your recourse is when you, you when there's been a breach, and it's all been about simply that. Well, it's it's too much been about that. Um, and again, again, what I, what I think has changed is the fact that now there are places where there are people are establishing privacy rights, um, and and those rights very much uh, are are then something that actually um people have to respect and are enforced and okay. and 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 so if you then look at what the goal of security and privacy 
becomes, rather than protecting personal information, it's, it's ensuring people's privacy rights. Okay. And so if you then begin to look at how you do security and privacy from that perspective, it has a profound impact on our industry. And I, so I think you then need to look, and, and as someone who has done this for a very long time, um, I've been reading people's license plates and doing facial recognition for uh, pro 40 years. <laughs> um, and so, and so, and, 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 and so, Security, security surveillance as opposed to commercial surveillance, and there's a very big difference. Security-based surveillance systems should basically be public, and be be and, and because the purpose and justification for it is that you're there to provide public safety, right? Generally, sure. um, and so that's it, so it's very holistic in that sense. And so when we were doing things like. Um, putting in place license plate readers. As an example, we would be overt saying, look, we're doing this to, so that you don't violate the toll booth, which otherwise you drive through and then the road can get funded and things don't work. And so there's, there was a purpose for surveillance there. And, and I think what's, ha what's happened is because, because the deployment of surveillance cameras since 9-11 has gone through the roof. Along at the same time, Moore's law continues to march forward on multiple different vectors, one of which is the resolution of the cameras, then the processing power of the cameras themselves, and at the same time, the development, the, 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 the proliferation of images that could be correlated to, along with the uh, open source software to do some of the things that we were used to be very complicated. Like when we were doing it 40 years ago and had to make a, fa a license plate reader, it was a, it took a lot of stuff. It was a band full of equipment, <laughs> and hundreds of thousands of dollars of stuff. And today you can do it with your smartphone sure. uh, and open source software. All right, so um, so in some ways it's been commercialized and you know, weaponized if someone were to get all uh, hyperbolic about it. Um, but it's generally available. And so, uh, so, so then, now that it's generally available, it, um, it, it was then used, I think, in some sense, um, with, with, with the lack of foresight about what people would think after the fact that you began to use mm. machine intelligence to do identification and location. And there's also ways that you can do this intelligently because when you do machine vision and you try to use AI with video, there's stages, right? So you can you don't necessarily have to be processing and trying to get every bit of information out of the picture. There's a concept of when you know maybe something like an alarm condition occurs, then maybe you begin to try to to do stuff. So there sure. so there are privacy there, there, there are privacy forward ways of doing things. And uh, and and a lot of that has to do with again goes back to the fact that if you do it from a user rights design perspective, uh, um, you you end up then focusing on um, consent and notice, and and having that be part and parcel of any activity, uh, including you know surveilling yourself. <laughs> sure. So it's, uh, in the in the in the municip in the municipality um, thing that I started with, like in San Francisco, for example. So, um, do you think that people could opt in or out of being surveyed in the public? You know, just as an example. Um, no, I don't think I don't think you can. I mean, I, okay. I don't think I don't think I don't think that <laughs> I, I don't think people can get blacklisted from the database facial database <laughs> store, right? So I yeah. You know, okay. I mean you could yeah, you, know, you could say, okay, well I yeah, you know, I've gone to Facebook and I've bought their graph and I've got all these images and so or you know, I've been just streaming the internet forever and I'm correlating people's pictures. It's not that hard. Do a Google image search to correlate a name to a face. Put your name into Google yeah. and look at images. Your yeah. face shows up, right? Sure. That's so because because that's so easy to do um, is, is is why you now need to be careful about 
whether or not it's okay for people to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, do do I want that to be the case? Do I, you know, how? But yeah, at some point, it's kind of fun. To, you know, like what other Salvatore D'Agostino shows up? And, you know, you go through all that. But then there's the other one of you know what 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 is it being used for? And yeah. the back to the machine vision analogy. So you have the raw data. I mean, you you have sort of like a general detection of stuff. You then can have sort of like classification of activity, and you can have identification sort of further downstream. So there's yeah, you know, and and so what happens sometimes is people throw all the switches on all at once, I and just it, because because they're there on the machine, right? So mm -hmm. like in some ways, you know, security people say, "Ooh, if, if I can get metadata, let me go get it," right? right. And since data, data is the oil. Uh, yeah, of the new economy or whatever that is, you know, people forgot that, you know, privacy is the toxic, you know, ah, oil good. spill or what, you know, so, um, good point. you know, I, it's like, you know, and it's, you know, and if you, anyway, you, so, so there's no need for that over, overkill in terms of generating metadata about whatever you touch online mm -hmm. or anywhere. Um, and and so and so and I think that I think that's exactly what that law is going to right. It's like ah. no, no, we we and and the other thing is that if people want it, then they can say it. And so there, so if you look mm. at what's going on in China, a state, and there's no, there is no uh, opportunity for people to say, oh, wait a minute, yeah. I don't want to have, <laughs> you know, you know where it's at, right? I don't want the government to be tracking me when I go in and out of public or any, or in some cases, private restrooms and count the number of pieces of toilet paper I use, which is actually true, right? There's no chance in China for people to say no you know, way. Mm -hmm. um, and, sure. you know, and, and so I think it's in some ways really important and encouraging that, but you know, I'm not surprised in San Francisco, but that somebody says, wait a minute, um, we prefer not to have public identification and surveillance and tracking. And in, in under GDPR, I mean, this is a special category, right? I mean, sure. this is this is a this is a high risk processing of personal information called out in that rule. So in some ways, all that San Francisco is doing is said, "Wait a minute, uh, <laughs> this is high risk. Why do we do we need to do it?" And that's what you should always. That's a question you should always ask whenever you get the high risk. Um, personal information processing, and it's, just, it's not just the risk of data, but you know, the the overhead of getting people to buy into it is would not be trivial, and so that should that's also kind of a clear indicator of whether or not it's a good idea if you're looking at it from the kind of open consent or protocol or design principles that we think can be very useful. Okay, I. I agree. So let's go, let's go pay some bills. And I want to get into a little more in consent and what's possible with consent when we come back. Uh, we'll be back in just about one minute. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, we're back with Security Matters Hawaii. Thanks for joining us. After the break, we've got Sal D'Agostino on the line, and we are talking about privacy, where it intersects, where identity and privacy and security intersect. And Sal's been getting into consent, and he's also got a, a he's a co-founder of Open Consent. So Sal, I wanted to get into 
the, you know, we talked just a little bit about how people accept these, these end user licensing agreements and they don't read them, they don't understand what's in them. Um, where, where can we go with consent? What's possible and what's the vision for what you're doing with open consent? Um, talk, talk a little bit about that for us, for our audience. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, and it, it, a lot of it, Andrew, has to do with that change in the balance um, in terms of how that uh, uh, interaction with my, you know, information takes place online um, or yours or uh, you know, personal or an individual's information. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about your current privacy experience, it's basically accepting cookies. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, cons consenting to downloads, um, operating systems, you know, in the end user perspective, which is, you know, it's a little different than consenting to you know, your, <laughs> uh, tracking. Um, and, okay, sure. um, right. But, you know, but those, are, but, but even in both of those cases, it's not the usability of it near zero. Yeah. Um, because you know, the, and, and there's no opportunity for the individual to actually do anything. It's very one way. You, you know, it's not like you sent something back. I mean, you, you first are sent to other places to go look at other stuff to tell you, which are which are also internally difficult experiences as well. Um, so what yeah. we're what we're looking to do is to change what that looks like, right? So the okay. idea that, um, in particular, a lot of it comes through the concept of, of, of notices um, coming, not you agreeing to things, but you getting notices back about what's happening with your information, right? right. And, okay. and, it, and, 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 and the notice is, ge is generated based on your consent. Um, okay. and, and again, with, with that comes the ability to do certain things. So, uh, you know, I mean, in cybersecurity, right, Nate, Andrew, we promote the concept of people having a cyber landing page where if you've got any questions, you know, there's places where you can go to file, you know, with DHS and CVEs and, the, you know, there's, there, there are places that you know you can go to do mm. something about security. Okay. Um, think about where do you go on a website to do something about privacy? <laughs> that, I think you got to pick up a phone and talk to somebody, I would say, is your only recourse. But, 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 but that isn't even available there. So if you yeah. look, there is, you know, on a, and so this is what I'm saying, the analog to a cybersecurity thing would be for there to be a cyber point of contact and something, sure. and, and, so, and some, some workflow that you can follow. It's a dead end today yeah. on, it, online. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do at Open Consent is change that, right? So from, instead awesome. of making a dead end, um, to begin to make it oper usable and operational, and it's and and you, you, I have, have had the fortunate ability to work on you know in different kinds of automation and machine intelligence, not only surveilling and machine vision, but robotics and other sorts of automation over the years. Um, the IDOLA platform that I have with my other company, ID Machines, is technical automation for the you know, physical security sure. industry. A, a lot of what Open Consent is about is is privacy automation ah. and how to make it usable. Because again, there, there are gaps in understanding and, and there are certain things that you can propagate as a result of having rights um, automatically because they're just there and you know, there's a legal basis for it, right? And, 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 that's, and that's the thing. So in Canada, um, it's very far along. In Washington State, it's very far along. In huh. California, it's very far along. So, you know, in Europe, it already is. Um, you're seeing substantial, um, you're beginning to see a variety and some very substantial enforcement of, 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 of rights here. And so there's going to be a need to be able to provide users with those rights that I was talking about before. Mm. And if in fact, okay. you know, if, if what security and pri privacy both manage, or, or they're trying to manage risk, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and many of us for do, you know, managing and doing a good job putting in countermeasures or, 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 or modeling, uh, you know, changing risk equations. Um, and for the better um, is, is, you know, is, is in some ways what we do for a living. Um, yeah. And so not being, not being able to, so, and so there are re, oh, many, many benefits to having the user involved 
-hmm. and actually put in control of managing their risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it make, doesn't it make sense, right? So if you think about it, where, where is the risk that the enterprise suffers? It's from the breach of people's personal information. When the, you know, when the OPM yeah. was hacked and Sarah, my wife's stuff was taken and then or collaterally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, you know, that was a breach of personal information. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to then go through this process of um, doing all these sorts of things. I mean, they're, the ability for you to have received a notice and have been able to take action um, should just, you know, I mean, need, would necessarily be built in. And, you know, it's more efficient. You know, even, even when, you, you know, that, that hack happens and, you, and, you, and you're on notification, if, if, you, if, you knew, if you knew ahead of time that that's how it worked, it mm -hmm. probably would have, you know, it, you know you're, you're prepared for that to take place mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, and whatever next steps you needed to, as opposed to this whole sort of you know, snake eating the antelope gulp that you know mm -hmm. suddenly everybody can convulses at the time of breach and the you know, and that's and that's kind of maximizes the damage of the breach too so this so is so if in fact you had sort of automation in place in which the users already ahead of time kind of knew what to do and how this mitigates and yeah it's one of the things that could happen i'm not saying you design for for breaches but i'm just using breach as an example sure. of how if you bring the bring the user in um it, it, there, there there are light, light layers of good things and benefits Mm -hmm. And 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 it's and, it, and so yeah you know, and and then the same thing when it, you know when it comes to deploying security systems you want people to know that there's a security system in place mm -hmm. right it's right. Uh, being public about security and so I think open surveillance and democratic surveillance as opposed to state sponsored where we were alluding to earlier that mm -hmm. you didn't have any you, know, you, you, you don't have any say. Um, is the only way to go, and yeah, and and so I think the article in San Francisco is an example, a very healthy example of how you work that out. And I think that then we can become much better at yeah at at, at maybe maybe it's no longer surveillance, and maybe at, maybe maybe it's actually structured sharing, or you know, I don't I don't want to be too optimistic given the fact that most of the world economy is based on this stuff, but uh, <laughs> you know who knows what might occur. Is, um, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm picking a number out of the air, but you know, it's yeah. a, you know it, it, it it does it, it it does provide a certain amount of lubrication to some international machinery. For sure, is um is do you think that that surface is going to expand with you know your identity being tied to like biometric signatures today that can be shared now? You know, we I sat in the PLAI demo uh, a few weeks ago, and they're you know making your biometric templates portable across different systems and things like that. So is, is the scope of your, your, your privacy surface expanding and do we have a way to, yeah. oh, to it's, deal it's, with it's, that? You know, bi bi well, it happened already with facial images yeah. and now the commercialization of print, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and face, right? So, um, I, you know, I've been work doing some work recently to look at how face is used in modern devices and how okay. um and, and how you, know, you you can restrict it to the trusted platform and if you know how to wipe it but you know it's not you know there yeah. are there it, it is it is not trivial to keep mm -hmm. secure your biometrics and i would not be a fan of my biometrics on server anytime i unless i absolutely have to i mean that's just sure. you know no 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 thank you that's just a, you know really yeah. yeah you know explain to me explain to me why you don't why, why there's not another option um okay yeah you know, again that, that you know and uh yeah i mean yeah, and again, you know, certain. Uh, yeah, where's where's consent network love, right? Yeah, well, that's that's the thing that concerns um, me yeah. is that there's. I mean, and 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 and, 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 and yeah, yeah, I mean, there, there's in no in no way is anybody building in the workflow to inform users about the, what might or might have been a compromise of their biometric information, and this is just raising a red flag for all that, right? I mean, so what? You, and I think it's good because what you, it's not like you have to do it that way. You can. Like the match on card for in the smart card world is an example of mm -hmm. how your, your your template gets captured at the device, sent to the the, the 
secure element in this case, uh, matched on the secure element, and then an answer comes out. No one ever stored your, your my template, right? right. I, it just was it was taken it was ta it was taken, transmitted, and then an answer came out. You know, and it you didn't have to hang around. You don't need to keep it. Um, yes. Yeah. After it's been, after it's been sent, you got an answer. Right. Once so the transaction occurs, design, sure. Right. Exactly. So you there are there are there, there are just you know just inherently better ways of doing this stuff, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. no one is considered. Well, excuse me. Yeah, they're, they're going over the top there. Um, unfortunately, not as often as it should be are people considerate of the implications of schemes that don't adhere to some of those design principles yeah um yeah that so yeah i mean i think i think that's a uh, that seems to me to be an unfortunate and more stuff in the news over the next several years certainly about mm. bad biometric guy uh, bingo <laughs> leakage hey um so we got a couple minutes left why don't you give us um Give us the, the sort of open consent pitch. What can, how can people get engaged with some of this information? What should they be trying to do to protect themselves? Um, so again, we're going to provide people with an ability to do that sort of home page for privacy. Um, awesome. We're going to let you know, we're going to, we're going to open that up for free. Um, open consent is going to do that in the relatively near future, um, uh, operating out of the, you know, the UK and in Canada. And I mean, to some extent anywhere, but I mean, in those cases, there's some, uh, um, you know, stronger incentives, I guess. Um, sure. though, in fact, I, you know, I think, I think the same incentives exist anywhere. There's stronger laws, I guess would be the better yeah. phrasing. Um, and, uh, and so, and then we're going to do that, and then, and then anybody can do that, and we're going to make it easy for people to do that, and then, and then we're going to offer a service keep, keeping track of whether people keep that up to date with a few simple things, and so there's then going to be a paid service, which is having us sort of basically give you a lot, you know, a, a, some 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 uh, current information about the state of privacy for people, and 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 so. You know, again, so rather than going to the privacy page and reading a privacy policy, there actually be some, you know, there'll be an iconish thing there, which you can, you know, do something to, and it will tell you a lot, or as it will tell you as much as um, that company is smart enough to tell you about what's going on with your, your, your personal information and, and how how they're treating as i said your privacy rights mm -hmm. and awesome. affording you the yeah you know, from there um you know in order to you know and then from there from the paid business perspective um uh, we can work with companies to um then ha ha you know make operational and automate and you know to the full extent some of some of those rights the, yeah. the free version has a few as a few simple things made operational. There's a you know the the paid the paid for version um, the live version. It's it you know it's not terribly much more, um, but you know it. I mean it, it, it's it's us it's us keeping a a, a a you know a check on it. Um, awesome. And you know and I think you know and it just in general you know it's it's a better signal. I mean and it and it's easy to use. I mean that, that that's that's the goal is to you know is to. You, is for it to be relative to me or individuals, um, to, and and for uh, yeah, and and for us to be able to do something with it, and uh, awesome. and and it and it'll be interesting to see how companies respond to that. Um, and yeah, and, and in particular, I am looking forward to working with the security industry because you know they they you know, we 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 should have a very good understanding of this. And uh, and in fact, you know, rather than as I said, the commercial capitalism case, um, we you know, we have a uh, yeah a, a public safety and other you know other basis for and justified purpose and in, 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 in yeah which which in all of these cases, I mean, purpose is a very important thing, right? And yeah. so if you if the yeah, and so having knowing how to uh, Provide just because we have a, a purpose doesn't mean there isn't a requirement for notice and and okay. and and for being public and I and I think that uh, you know and I think the the the, the it, it will be, it will be to the industry's benefit to 
um, to, to, to adopt that kind of forward approach. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to commend the Security Industry Association, actually, Andrew. You know, we okay, did some work sure. with them um, and developed some resources jointly, Open Consent and SIA. Um, they were really out in front on this, and you know, was and and as a tr you know, security trade association, you know, really forward. Um, and you know, we continue to be collaborating, you know, with them on, uh, on this. Um, awesome. And uh, you know, the, and then there's some good references there actually. Um, and there's more, more, and more available at Open Consent. And you know, anytime people like to go take a look, you know, it's the, we should we should be out out we should be out out from under the covers in the very near future. <laughs> Awesome. So folks, if you're watching out there, your privacy is something you need to, to take um, a, a good look at. Check out Open Consent. Check out the information that's maybe on SIA's website. Um, find out what's coming at you because you shouldn't just be giving it away. Okay. So thanks yeah, for joining yeah, us so secure, much. Yeah, securityindustry.org, Andrew, I think is the yeah, website. For dot, guys, right? dot org. Yeah. All right. Thanks yeah, so much. I mean, um, and we will talk again soon. Aloha, Al. Uh, Mahalo. Yeah, yeah. Always, Andrew. Mahalo.